And Lucas, what do you know about the Titans from the Titanfall universe? I know that they like shoving somebody inside them and shooting a lot of things. Lucas, how do you feel about giant robots? I'm a big fan of giant robots, mm -hmm. and you know, the bigger the better. Yes. Uh, do you have any personal favourite giant robots uh, from media? Yeah. I mean, I think one of my favourites has just got to be even just the idea of like the Megazord, mm -hmm. i.e. the Voltron robot, just the five robots coming together to make the mega giant robot. By extension, I guess you also love the Dragon Zord. Oh, yeah. And its direct inspiration, Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Like, fucking, like, like, as if Godzilla wasn't scary enough, it's making a fucking robot and getting rocket legs. And yeah, just like giant robots are one of those things in media like, I adore. And despite being fucking rad, Hollywood seems afraid to give us the giant robots we want. And in fact, when they put giant robots in media, they shy away from them. Like, they're seemingly embarrassed of the giant robots. Yeah, I mean, other than maybe like the Hulkbuster armor in the MCU, like, there's not that many really mainstream um, portrayals of like big badass robots. The obvious counter argument to that being Pacific Rim. And Pacific Rim is like the exception that proves the rule because that is like a homage to all of those kick ass giant Japanese robots. <laughs> That is super fucking rad. And it was like a passion project uh, from Guillermo del Toro. And you can tell that because when you watch Pacific Rim 2, which he didn't have a hand in, it's fucking shit. And none of the robots in Pacific Rim 2 feel like they have any weight to them. Which I think is the thing I love most about giant robots in media. And it's one of the things that I think like separates good giant robots from bad giant robots. It's why the giant robots in Titanfall feel so good. Because there is so much weight and heft and just deliberateness of movement to the way the Titans move around. It's fucking awesome. But without further ado, let's delve into like the universe's explanation for Titans, which says say simply, Titans are mech-style robots descended from modern-day fledgling military exoskeletons designed for both civilian and military applications. And I believe that's something about the Titanfall universe that I am aware of, um, and it's that like the Titans originally started life like farming implements or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah, like they started life like, like for farming or industry, and then they got repurposed for military use. Because like, whilst giant robots are fucking rad, they are wildly inefficient. And like we mentioned Pacific Rim is a great example of giant robots. And even as a huge fan of that film, I have to admit they are a terribly inefficient choice for dealing with the kaiju. Because just build giant guns. It pains me to say that they sh shouldn't have built the giant robots. And I think they do have a moment in the first Pacific Rim they talk about how it took, like, the US military six days to take out the first kaiju. But later in that same film, they do have that moment where Gypsy Danger just obliterates a kaiju with a gun on its arm. It's like, well, did you really need to build the rest of the, the Jaeger? You could just build eight of those guns. And I don't like that that's the solution, because that's the most efficient way. I, I much prefer the giant robots. When you look at it, it's like, it's so inefficient. Mm -hmm. And it all boils down to the fact that the human form itself is very inefficient. Titans are used for a variety of tasks throughout the Titanfall universe, such as the journeyman, which can be fielded in a variety of roles such as agriculture, logistics, shipping and salvage, deep space search and rescue, cargo transport and construction. So there is. They were built for like use in um, uh, industry and then people realise you can smack guns on them. And that's like a, uh, a trope in fiction. That's very common. And, it's, and when that trope is ignored, it's actually kind of frustrating, like um, Game of Thrones. 1-1, mm. one, one, the last giant, and he's like, fighting with his bare hands. <laughs> like, during like, Game of Thrones, like that episode on the wall, and a giant just has a giant bow and arrow, and it kills like six people at once. Oh, God, yeah. And then they have 1-1 like, one, one in like the Battle of the Bastards, and it's like he's fighting with his bare hands, and he's not wearing armor. It's like, why is he not decked head to toe in plate mail, wielding a 14 foot long broadsword? <laughs> like, why was there not a meeting where they said, look, we've only got a certain amount of resources to deck out our soldiers, but we do have one soldier who's 25 feet tall. Maybe, like, and if I was on the front lines, I'd be like, I'll give up like my left shoulder plate to give the 14 foot tall man more armor because he's going to be leading the charge. Mm -hmm. So it does make sense in that regard, but it's like, it's so frustrating when like, they don't armor up the giant dude. It's like, come on, he's so useful. <laughs> he's the literal most useful part of your army. Like, just give him a rock. If they just gave him a rock and taught him to throw rocks, he'd have been more useful. It says here that uh, the reserve models of the Atlas, Ogre, and Strider additionally appear to be civilian model Titans fitted with improvised equipment, um, emphasizing their nature as um, uh, 
civilian tools that have been repurposed for warfare. It says here that some war painting plans that the Scorch class Titan, my personal main in Titanfall 2, um, has some firefighting roles due to its fire resistant plating, which means that they took something designed to save human life from like one of like you know man's oldest foes, fire. And then repurposed it so it could like melt people alive. They turned it into a war crime bot. I was gonna say, not only did they make it a death robot, they made it one that spreads fire everywhere. Yeah. Like the exact opposite intention of its original purpose. <laughs> That'd be like build like getting an ambulance saying, well, these ambulances have got massive fuck-off engines, are really fast, and have a lot of medical equipment in them, and just putting all the scalpels on the front of the bumper and making it crash into people. So, Lucas, we have a couple of um, uh, subheadings here we can cover. We have um, overview, which we've just covered, deployment, pilots, variants, loadout, and trivia. So what would you like to cover? Maybe, like, deployment. Yes, and, and Lucas, what is it that's commonly said when a Titan is deployed? You're dropping a Titan. No, stand by for Titanfall. It's the name of the game, man. The name of the game. And that, to me, is why Titanfall just is the, one of the most top-tier first-person shooters, because that moment of calling in your Titan, and in any other game, that would take 10 minutes. Mm. Like, during that in Call of Duty, it's like calling in like a helicopter. It takes 30 seconds to get to the battlefield. Um, by which point in a game against people who are half decent, the game's already been shot down. Yeah. In Titanfall, it's like, I want my Titan. And it's like, they just shoot it at the Earth. <laughs> it says it, most Titans are typically deployed by the, via the process of Titanfall. This involves the Titan being launched out of a starship hangar bay at hypersonic velocities in a similar manner to a drop pod. This deployment method is extremely precise and allows the Titan to arrive on the ground in under a minute. So they just have giant... Like, barracks in space full of Titans. Yeah. It says here that while on a starship, Titans are constructed on site from parts on the ship before being re uh, ready to drop. The process can take under five minutes to assemble a Titan from the pre-existing parts. And the thing that I like most about this is because every Titan's customised, which means that they not only have to build my Titan in five fucking minutes, but they have to paint it the colours that I want. They have to put the stupid logos on, like the yeah. little shark on the side. And if they don't paint it... Bright fucking pink, it's going back. <laughs> huh, and it says here that once the battle is concluded, the IMC is known to utilise the Widow Transport Craft to transport Titans back into order, orbit, ready for redeployment. Well, not when I play the game, because I always end every match by self-destructing my Titan as a fucking flex. <laughs> yeah. This thing cost a billion dollars. Let's blow it up to celebrate. And we, we can't not talk about, though, like, the best Titan bro, like BT from Titanfall 2 story. Mm -hmm. um, where, like, spoilers for the game, you think BT's dead. Like, the robot dies, and it's really sad, because it's a fucking rad robot. And uh, its last act is, like, protecting you from someone trying to kill you, and then it gets down on its knees and says, take the seer kit. And it's like, what is the seer kit? And I think it's like, survive, evade, resist, endure. And you open it up, and you get a pistol in there, you're like, what a fucking pistol and a knife? Well, then you attach the Titan's eyeball to your wrist and it becomes the smart pistol. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so fucking sick. Oh, it's, it's so fucking rad. But what bit next, mate? What bit next? There's so like, there's so much lore in this Titanfall universe. I didn't know about it. So I spent too much time melting people with my um, uh, Papa Scorch. Like, Spice Daddy Robot, let's go. You know what? Let's just get some trivia about these Titans. Lucas has requested some trivia about the Titans from Titanfall. In Titanfall, it was often speculated that a form of motion capture was used to physically control and pilot Titans. In Titanfall 2, it shows and describes the primary method of piloting a Titan through a neural link created between Titan and pilot, though the exact nature of this link is unclear. Instrumentation akin to that seen in modern-day jet fighters and battle tanks can be seen inside a Titan's cockpit, or the nearest analogous thing to one. And I don't like that. I like the idea that when you're in the Titan, you're the one going, doo doo boo <laughs> Do you know like that bit in, like, fucking Pacific Rim? Yeah. Where it's like, dun 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 It's like every step takes, like, four hours. Don't do it. Worry about yourself, kiddo. It's like the thing of, like, VR, isn't it? Like, VR will never be as accurate an input method as just a controller in your hands or a mouse and keyboard. And realistically, Titans would be controlled by fucking nerds on like League of Legends setups like a million miles away. You just jump in the Titan and it just passes you an Xbox controller. Like, go on. Yeah. The thing is, that I think I'd do all right. 
And that's the thing, it, it goes back to that thing of like, it's super inefficient, but the cooler way is the more inefficient way. And that's the way that I want to see. But I know that in real life, we'll never get anything like this. And even like in games that try and take themselves more seriously, they're never going to do the cool thing because it's more, it's less efficient and therefore not realistic, even though it's a game where you've got fucking giant robots in it. And it says here that it is likely that the Neural Link is exclusive to the Vanguard class Titan as pilots of regular Titans are able to cycle through multiple Titans in one battle without needing to wipe a Neural Link. So that's why like BT is so OP. Ah, uh, right, okay. Because B BT can change his loadout, whereas regular Titans you can use like multiple ones. And that's why like in Titan Falls multiplayer, which I think is canon to the games, mm -hmm. um, uh, you can use multiple Titans in one game if you really feel like it. Occasionally, during a Titanfall in Titanfall, the animation of the Titan burning as it enters the atmosphere will glitch and remain after landing. Afterwards, the Titan will appear as a giant walking blowtorch. Yeah. That is a glitch that should have been made canon. Do you know, like, in Halo, you've got, like, the Reach helmets, where you're constantly mm. on fire. That should have been, like, if you get, like, a million kills, your Titan <laughs> is always on fire. Just set your Titan on. What you could do with Scorch, one of Scorch's upgrades, is to be immune to its own flames. Mm -hmm. And you can use that as in a super hilarious way of shooting um, your own bullets at your Titan to melt people who try and um, climb to the back. To end on, Lucas, can we just talk about the fact that to get into a Titan, like it can catch you in midair and it's hyper shit. Yeah. And again, that's so inefficient. But if if it was real, I'd demand that too. It's just when you like slide through its legs, it catches you. Yeah. And it catches you and it puts you into the, the pilot. And I have on multiple occasions been shot while that's been happening. Like, I have, like, done that animation. I can see that my Titan's been punched from all sides by other Titans. But it's worth it for that one cool moment. I don't care that I've got to immediately eject straight afterwards because I got donkey punched into oblivion. It was worth it to see my pilot do a backflip.